my channel or welcome back if you're returning. Don't forget, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook under Hey Y'all Let's DIY. I'd also appreciate it if y'all would like, share, and subscribe to my channel. If y'all like farmhouse decor on a budget, trash to treasure, and Dollar Tree, make sure you stay tuned. Today I'm participating in the DIY challenge hosted by Heidi Sambel, and the theme today is farmhouse. We'll talk about that in just a little while. Let's get right into it, y'all. DIY number one. One thing I love is farmhouse signs, but y'all, they're so expensive. So I'm gonna show you today how to make a really high-end looking farmhouse sign for about four to five dollars. The first thing I do is take three of these Happy Easter signs from the Dollar Tree, and I remove the hangers and all embellishments that are on the back of these signs. Now, they have these signs for every season, so if you can't find the Easter ones, that's fine. These are just the long rectangular signs from the Dollar Tree. Again, we're just removing the hanger and all embellishments on the signs. Now, usually I try to pull this paper off because that's all this front is, is paper. And it doesn't work out for me. But today, y'all, it worked. I was so excited. I had to do a little bit of picking and pulling but honestly, they came off in pretty much one to two pieces. So I was so excited about that. So I'm just showing you here how I did the first one. Just keep in mind, I do this for all three signs and I get that paper removed on all three signs. It just makes it so much easier to have like a clean piece on the back. It looks like a finished, more finished piece like this and you don't really have to cover it up. So I just, tear all this paper off of all three signs. Now we're gonna start by putting two signs together. I like to use paint sticks for this, the stir sticks, because these are much more sturdy than just popsicle sticks. So I just butt two of the signs together, then I put some hot glue on my paint stick, glue it right in that seam, then I go through and just to reinforce, I go ahead and use my stapler and staple some staples in there. You can't staple it, or I couldn't staple it with just the signs because the signs were too thin, my staples were too long, and they were coming through. But doing it this way worked perfectly. And it gives it a little more stability. So we're going to now butt up the third sign. We're not worrying about where those hangers were up there, those holes, because we're totally gonna cover those up. If those bother you, you can go ahead and use some wood filler and fill those in, but they didn't bother me at all. Again, just taking our paint stir stick, adding some hot glue to the back, putting it right there where they butt up to each other. You see, I did have to cut a couple of the paint stir sticks down. And then we're just going to staple. So easy, and it really does give a high-end look once we're finished. So now we've got our three signs together. We're gonna to take our Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white, and we're going to give two good coats to this. Now, I do a full coat, two full coats, but they're two full messy coats, if that makes any kind of sense at all. I'm not worried about the strokes in it. That's why I'm using this brush, because the strokes are actually going to help me when I do the distressing on this. So again, just two messy, full coats. <laughs> Does that make any sense, y'all? And besides, I'm a messy crafter. If y'all are new to my channel, you will see that. I, I make a mess, but in the end, I love how these things turned out, and this is one of my favorite pieces. Now, let me go ahead and say that this is for, if, for those of you who don't know, I travel with my husband for his job. So right now, we are in a totally different state than where we live. I'm originally from Kentucky, that's where I live. And, well, I'm actually from Indiana, but I live in Kentucky. And this is for a special lady in my hometown who I think the world of, Leah. And I'm going to link her Instagram channel in the comments. Y'all make sure you go over on Instagram and check her out. She's the sweetest thing ever. And I just wanted to do something special for her and her family. So now I'm taking my little Cricut spatula and I'm going through where these signs butt up together because I want, this is going to be like a shiplap sign. So I want those grooves to really stand out. So I'm just going through and 
kind of scraping the paint out that actually got down in there just to give the illusion of the shiplap. This is so much easier for me than just trying to paint on the shiplap and I think it looks so high end when you do it this way. I do go on and distress, which is what we're gonna do right now. We take some black chalk paint, I'm sorry, black chalk board paint, and we're going all over this thing. I focus a lot right there on those grooves. And y'all can see, I got pretty heavy handed on this, but don't worry if that's not your look. Sorry, y'all, the alarm clock was going off. If that's not your look, that's fine. It's actually a little bit too distressed for me. And we're going to go back through and we're going to tone it down a little. But anyway, I just take my chippy brush and I go through and just make some bold strokes on there. Then I take a thinner brush and I take that same chalkboard paint and we're kind of going into those grooves a little more. I want those to really stand out and pop. So I'm not worried about a perfect line on these. Like I said, we're gonna go through and, uh, I don't know, blend all this in here in a little while. But for right now, I just wanna go in and make sure that I am highlighting that right there where we are getting our shiplap look from. Okay, now this is where we're gonna go in and we're going to take care of some of that heavy distressing. I just get the same linen chalk paint, chippy brush, and go through and just go right over it. This really smooths it out, it calms it down, and it blends it all in together where it's not such a sharp contrast between the black and the white. I love how this turns out. Sometimes I do get a little heavy handed, but I love distressed things. That is my decor, that's what I decorate with, and the farmhouse distressed, and so, but sometimes I get a little heavy handed. I think we all do. But anyway, then I'm just gonna take my finger sander and my little spatula there, and we're going in and we're smoothing all this out. Taking that finger, again, we're going through here and we're getting some of the excess paint out. But taking that finger sander, and I'm so sorry about the shaking, y'all. It looks like an earthquake's going on here. But anyway, going in with that sander really helps to give it more of a cohesive look. It's kind of like blending in your makeup. You got to get in there and blend it all in. You don't want just the stark black, the stark white. You want it all to blend in together. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just wiping off the excess dust as I go. So while I do this, I'll tell you all a little bit about myself for those of you that are new to my channel. I said earlier, what I do is I craft in a hotel room 99% of the time. I travel with my husband for his job, so a lot of what you see me do is in a hotel room. I do have a craft stash, and it's actually taking us over here. So this in this video, I'm kind of crafting my stash a little bit just to kind of get some things used up. Okay, y'all, now I've went to Home Depot and I got some square dowel rods. I wish I could tell you the size, but I honestly cannot remember. And I'm taking my stain there and I'm going to paint all, all four of these. I've got two longer pieces for the sides and two shorter pieces for the top and bottom. I just measured them out and cut them with my little handsaw. But I'm painting my stain on and then I'm wiping it right back off with a paper towel. I'm not gonna show you me doing all four of these because it's the exact same process on all four that I'm doing right now. I do only do three sides because the back side is going to actually be up against the sign so I'm totally not worried at all about that not having any stain and in all reality it's going to make it stick so much better without having stain on that one side. So we're just painting on and rubbing off. And again, we're doing this on all four pieces of this, what I'm calling the trim or the frame. Here we are with all four done. And now we're going to adhere them to our sign. 
Now this gets to be a little bit of a funky angle, y'all, and I apologize for that, but this is a huge project. So I'm just taking wood glue, or not wood glue, I'm sorry, Gorilla Hot Glue. Just running a bead all down the strip of wood. And then we are just putting it on our sign. That's it, y'all. I didn't use wood glue. I only used the hot glue. Because I didn't use stain on that one side, this has held up perfectly. And I'm so excited about how this turned out. I'm so glad that I used the thicker uh, wooden dowels, the square dowels. I was going to use the thin, but oh, the way this turned out, I'm so glad I used these thicker ones. So we're gonna do this for all four sides. Again, the two longer sides. Uh, are on the side and the two shorter ones are on the top and the bottom and again just gorilla hot glue that's all it is to adhere this now I have cut out a decal with my Cricut our life our story our home this is us and the reason I did this is Leah is a very simple person she tries to live a very simple lifestyle and I just wanted something simple. Nothing too frilly, nothing too out of the box, just something simple. So we're going to adhere this to our side. Now, this is a bigger decal. So with this, I really took my time pulling this uh, transfer tape off. If you go too fast, you're liable to either rip part of your transfer or some of it will come up. You see my R's coming up right there, but I actually did figure that out before it was too late and put it back down. There we go. But I just really, on bigger transfers, I always try to really take my time to get these on there, to get them stuck, to make sure that nothing rips, nothing comes out of place. And sometimes that does happen anyway, even when you're as cautious as I'm trying to be here. So the only advice I can give you again is take your time, be patient. This process is not a is not like a sticker. You just stick it and go. It takes a little bit of time to get it where you want it, how you want it, get it all laid down right. But in the end, I think it is totally worth it. I love my Cricut. There are days that I would just rather use other things, but for this project, my Cricut worked out perfectly. If you don't have a Cricut, you can get some stickers. You can use your own handwriting. Just be creative. Now, I don't show this on video, but after I'm finished with this, I do go through with a layer of Mod Podge and cover this entire sign. I wanna make sure that those, this decal is going to stay and it is going to be something that Leah can have for a very long time to come. So simple y'all. And this to me is a high-end sign for a little bit of money. Here's our finished project. Again, today I'm part of the DIY challenge on Heidi Sambles channel. And the theme this week, this month is farmhouse. I'm so excited for this. Y'all make sure you go out, check, go check Heidi's channel out. I'll have her link in the description box. DIY number two. This is a super, super simple project. So I had this Easter sign. I believe it's an Easter sign. Yep, it's another Easter sign. Took the embellishment off, took the cord off, and for some reason I have lost my footage. I just used the linen chalk paint, uh, the white linen chalk paint, and did a rough coat over this with my chibi brush because I wanted those streaks. I wanted this to look old and weathered. Now I'm just taking these stickers from the Dollar Tree and just sticking those right on there. The laundry room and then this other little one that says wash, dry, fold, put away, all of that over on the side there. Then I'm going to take another set and I just take the washer and the little basket off and stick those on there. Y'all, this sign might have cost me $2 in total, $2.50. And to me, it makes a huge impact and I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to get home and hang this up in my laundry room. It is so cute. So this is another alternative. Check out the Dollar Tree y'all for stickers because they're really stepping up their game. And this looks high end to me. Now I'm just taking some of the thicker jute 
and I'm going to go ahead and make me a hanger. I just glue it to the back and then I glue a popsicle stick on top just for a little more stability. Now, because I wanna make this look old and weathered and you know, whatever, I'm going to take my jute string right there and I'm going to cut it in half and then I'm gonna tie a knot in it. Just like it broke at one time and now we've had to fix it. <laughs> Y'all, I try to put stories with everything I make, but anyway. Now we're just going to take some plain old clothespins and we're just going to clip those right on there. Nothing major, nothing hard. And we put three on each side. Y'all, I love how this turned out. This is our finished project. I hope you all like this. It is so, so cute. Here's our finished project, y'all. Isn't that not adorable? DIY number three. Again, using my stash, but a super simple, super cute DIY. So I had this tobacco basket that I had used in a previous DIY. I want to say I got it at Target around Thanksgiving time. You could see it's beat up, battered up, but to me, the more beaten up and battered up it is, the better. And then I've got this come and get it sign that I believe I got at Hobby Lobby on clearance or maybe just on sale. So I take off the hanger of that little sign and I'm going to use some of the thicker jute cord. I, the hanger that was on it was just a little too small and did not work out for me. So all I'm going to do, I'm gonna tie it right up to that center piece of the tobacco basket. You can see right there what I'm doing. I do have a hanger that I stuck on there uh, with the previous DIY. I'm leaving that. <laughs> but it's just some jute string and some hot glue. So we get that hung up on there and we're gonna put a little bit of hot glue just to reinforce that sign. It's not going anywhere, but I kind of want it to stay where I want it to stay and not flop all over the place. That's what it looks like. Now we're gonna take these little bottles that I got and we are going to just wrap them in some red and white buffalo check or gingham, I'm not sure what you call this. We're just gonna wrap a strip around the middle of each of them. Y'all, this is so simple, but I think it makes such a huge impact and it's so adorable. I hope you all like these DIYs as much as I do. I had such a blast on this challenge and I'm so thankful to Heidi for putting this on. And y'all make sure you go check out her channel. She is an amazing crafter. So here we are, we're just doing that second bottle, just wrapping that ribbon all around it. I got that ribbon at the Dollar General Store and I think it was only $2 for a pretty good sized roll. Now we are going to glue our little bottles, because we're making them as vases, onto our tobacco basket. At first I tried to put the hot glue straight on the tobacco basket, that did not work. So I just put some along the edges of the bottles and then I glue them down to the flat spot there on the tobacco basket. Y'all, I think this turned out so cute. I know I've said that a million times, I'm sorry. If y'all are new to my channel, you'll see. I'm a talker, I can talk, talk, talk. Sometimes I talk about unnecessary things. <laughs> but anyway, I take some of the onion grass from the Dollar Tree. This is one of my favorite florals they have at the Dollar Tree. I take some off of the stalk there and then I just put one in each of the bottles and then we're going to take some baby's breath also from the Dollar Tree, cut them up a little bit and we put two little sprigs in each bottle. I just think this is so adorable and so easy. You wouldn't even have to use a tobacco basket if you didn't have it. You could use almost anything to make this. There I'm just taking my little clippers and pulling off some of the hot glue that was left from the previous project. Now we're gonna take this gingham black and white ribbon from the Dollar Tree and we are just gonna make two little simple shoestring bows. One for each of the bottles. And I love the contrast between the black and white gingham and the red and white. I think it was so cute. We're just gonna stick those right on the bottles, one on each. Just a little hot glue, y'all. And that's it. This project is finished. Y'all, again, I hope you enjoy these projects. 
They're really simple, really, but I think they make a high end statement. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed these. Thank you again to Heidi for putting on this challenge. I've so enjoyed being a part of it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I would love to have each and every, every one of you as a member of my family. Y'all come back now. You hear?